Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. Here's something a bit new, it's covering DLC updates. Now we don't want to score these in a traditional sense, but we will give you a buy or avoid style recommendation at the end of the video. Dead Cells is probably one of my favourite games on Switch. It has that rare quality, where it not only provides incredibly fluid, addictive gameplay, but it also constantly rewards the player with meaningful new additions that impact your early game experience if you choose to switch up your playstyle. When developer Motion Twin decided to put out a paid DLC, having already put out a few free ones, they went the extra nine yards to explain exactly why they were doing it. Probably cash though, right? Cash? Yeah, I'd go cash. But still, they say it's cash to make more BDLC, so nice one. Is it deserved? And should you pick it up? Let's find out. In terms of the story, you're given the usual snippets and glimpses, but these are to be discovered over several playthroughs. I haven't found them all, but they're in a similar vein to the previous entries, or you may find a room with a statue or some other artifact whereby examining certain things will give exposition from the main character. These are fittingly humorous and lend a touch of otherness. Many games aspire to, but not many achieve. What I would say though, it does feel at times the lore of Dead Cells would perhaps benefit from some discoverable tomes or some such to fill in the gaps. It's just a touch too vague for many, but it really isn't about that. It simply adds a layer to the overall experience. If you're unfamiliar with the core gameplay and controls, I'll give you a brief overview. The core experience takes place from a fixed 2D perspective. The headless character you control is one of the nameless, slime-like creatures who reanimate the bodies of a prisoner. Yeah, I know. Thankfully, your movement and controls are as far from zombified or lethargic as you could imagine. Much like the inspiration Prince of Persia, your character moves with a fluidity that's almost unmatched. You can roll, jump, double jump, attack, parry, and slam your way through each stage. There's a parkour feeling, which is difficult to accurately describe in only a few words. I think fluid movement and combat is going to have to suffice. In terms of the general formula, the DLC won't change that. Instead, it introduces a few new areas, and ones which I've realised I really can't pronounce. The dilapidated Arboretum, Arboretum, man, and the morass of the banished, one being a swamp and the other toxic frogman filled these have a few new enemies, however there are also a few new elements at play. Mini boss segments make an appearance and these locked in do or die fights can be surprisingly grueling. Now I won't spoil everything, but what I will say is that the new boss is in no way on the same difficulty in my opinion as the concierge as stated. I mean, I could be just really bad at it, what with it being so new and uh, the muscle memory not being what it was, but I found it much trickier to not take damage and got wrecked a number of times. As for the areas themselves, they're typical dead cells with some similarities to stages like the clock tower levels with the movement from left to right from the beginning and more verticality than some of the other stages. Equally so, the new enemies can be a real pain in the ass and the design favours a constant play and motion as some have stagger points where the offence is the only way to go to stop them winding up on their big moves. Replacing the irritating birds, you've got the grubs that drop from the ceiling and can teleport to your location. Secret areas abound, as you'd expect, with a number of new scrolls thrown into the mix. At least I thought there were. I'm not entirely sure about that because it's been a while and there's been a few DLCs released in between. It could just be some of those. To access the first of the new levels, you'll need to look around for the key and then you're away. The stages will utilise all the advanced skills you've gained from before and overall they are more of the greatness you'd come to expect. They do little new per se, but I suspect series veterans will be just fine with that. Much in the same way as Hollow Knight did, solid, well-designed continuations of an already winning formula is the order of the day. As far as the visual presentation, the game has always done well with animations and parallax multi-depth backdrops. Performance is a rock solid 60 frames per second, so there's no change there. Artistically, the new levels offer a bit of variety and they're a welcome, more lush change from some of the existing stages, but if you're looking for something completely new then, well, nah, everything looks and sounds great and particular credit to the new musical score in these stages. They're on point. <laughs> My 
Monster design is clever with another new set of countermeasures for the player to learn. Overall, at a round a little under £5 for the DLC, is solid value. Offering a few new routes can only be a good thing. Whether you'll take these consistently will depend on your ability to play the game better than me. But a fresh lick of paint, some new enemies and areas can only benefit an already great experience. If you plan on picking up the whole game, including the DLC for the first time, then I can wholeheartedly recommend doing so. I'm pleased how open and honest the developers have been, and quite frankly, I am more than happy to credit the two or three hundred hours of play I've had so far from the original game with a few of my gold coins. In other words, take my cash. The Dead Cells Dead Sea DLC is a definite buy from us for both new and existing owners of the game. It's time to dust off your head and dive back into the world. A big thanks to our patrons. We'll be giving away three big sets of the Geotech bundle you can see on the screen over the holiday here in the UK. Two sets for our patrons and one for all of you lucky subscribers. We will announce all the details on Friday or Saturday or Sunday the weekend. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya! <laughs> that one was a bit of a song.